what Jesus experienced when being rejected by the people of Jerusalem. We talk about radical hospitality sometimes, but what about being radical and graciously taking that it takes a certain kind of grace to accept help. And it isn't always easy. Someone wants to extend a hand, but you adamantly say, no, I'm okay. I can manage. I can do it all. I'm independent. I'm okay. It isn't always easy for us to be generous of heart to accept when invitations of assistance come along. We need to get better at that. The Episcopalian theologian Barbara Brown Taylor, who I quoted last week, says, if you have ever loved someone you could not protect, then you understand the depth of Jesus' lament. All you can do is open your eyes. You cannot make anyone walk in them. Meanwhile, this is the most vulnerable posture in the world. God sent us from here knowing we are enough. Blessed and loved is your own. I am currently the choir director at this church, but I actually uh, have sung with several choirs at the church. I started out in the junior choir when I was a little kid. Uh, my name is Jenny Oster, Jennifer Oster. Um, I've been at this church since I was a very, very small child. I'm from a large family of six children, and uh, when we were quite small, our grandmother used to bring us to church here. For me, more than anything else, uh, the music is, is the reason. Um, some people uh, worship through, through um, spoken prayer, um, I think you'd find that an awful lot of people who sing in church choirs, that's how they worship, is through music, and, and that's really what it is for me. Well, I felt very excited about coming to church today because it was the first time the choir is back together to sing, and it was wonderful. <laughs> I have only been twice since COVID in the building because I Zoomed, and it was so wonderful to see the choir and see more people, and because when it's Zoomed, you can just see the, you know, the minister. And I really felt I was at church again. Really wonderful. <laughs> and for me, the, the music is a big part of the, the church for me. The music yes. and the outreach, yeah. as I keep saying. <laughs> My name is Brad Inglis and I'm the minister here at Central United Church and uh, I began in uh, October 
and uh, I'm an interim minister here, so just here for a short time and uh, being able to uh, celebrate the folks of Central United. And it has had a long history of outreach in the community, uh, that sense of being on the street uh, with the folks. Uh, last year at the, in the Weston King Neighbourhood Centre, they provided uh, over 44,000 meals out the door. And uh, that was started by folks here in the, uh, in the congregation and has of course expanded. Uh, I think Central, when they see a need, they want to be able to fill it. And they're very community oriented uh, here, uh, especially with this location, 1 King Street. Uh, it's a real pride of theirs to be, uh, to be able to be involved in a changing community. We talk about church beyond the walls and how important that is in a changing time. How is church relevant uh, in our community in 2022? Uh, making it accessible for folks from all different walks of life, different faith perspectives, sexuality, uh, how you identify gender-wise. All of those things are so important and meeting our spiritual needs in different ways. I'm here in part of the storage area of the food bank, uh, Ways, Western Area Emergency Services. And you'll see around here, we've got lots of diapers and all sorts of food items for the, um, the people who come in. And wh what happens is people sign up with Ways and they're on the list and then they can come once a week to get food. And uh, this includes all sorts of things, um, and many donations and money donated by people. And also downstairs, we have the Weston King Neighborhood Center where people are served a meal, breakfast and lunch every day. So this is a, a very important part of, of the neighborhood for the people who are short on food. Well, in addition to waste, it started out, we were just caring about food. But then as it became incorporated and there was a bit more money, they built showers. There are two showers, there's a washroom, they have clean clothes for them, they have a washer and a dryer. And then they help them with things like finding rent and legal help and harm reduction. And in addition to, to all that, they're just there for them most of the time and meeting their needs and getting to know what they are. And they have been given a grant for this, so it has gone from food to an amazing outreach. And during the election, you can't vote without an address, and Waste became their address for the homeless people, and they got to vote. So that's the kind of, in addition to food, what we do with them. I'm Lang Moffat. I was born in the Western area. Um, and that was back in 1928, which is a little while ago. When we were a town on our own in Weston, we de dealt with those things. But when we became the first part of York and then were incorporated there into Toronto, we found that the services that we used to have in the town of Weston had all gone. And uh, we're now down in the center of the city and the people living in our areas were being underserved very seriously. And so that's how we actually developed the, the Weston King Neighborhood Center. So I'm Shauna DeConnick and I, and this is Patricia. We've been um, with the church for a long time. I've been oh, here more than 20 years and yeah. Patricia's been here longer than that. And, um, so we, we work with the refugees. Um, we've done two different programs with the refugees. We, um, we actually had a private sponsorship originally with the Syrian refugees. And uh, that was in a combination with three other churches, three other United churches. And uh, it was very successful. We had a, a couple from Syria who, um, we really helped them get started, get uh, furnishings, get housing, housing yeah. and, and healthcare and everything else. And you know, how to use the subway and how to go shopping and all of those. Wheel trans, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, they actually, the, the couple from Syria, they, um, they well, had children while they were here and they uh, have a job and they're very, they've done extremely well. And 
they're very well integrated into the Toronto community. Mm -hmm. My name is Joyce Klamer. It used to be Joyce Osborne. Um, I joined the church when I was 27 simply because it was up the street from where I lived and it was easy to get to. Then when I joined the church, I came the first week and signed the little book and it said, what are you interested in doing? And I said, uh, ladies group and choir. And I got a call that week from the person, Ken Dag, in charge of the choir. And I was a member of the choir from then on. This was an elderly man, considered very elderly, and he was just in his maybe 76. But people don't live that long there. But he had, he of course I had a translator, but he was telling me he has arthritis, and he tells me in the morning he groans. And when he groaned, the dog came over and put his head on his knee. And John back there was like six foot eight or something, and. and it seemed like the school buses always got stuck in the river. I had dark hair then. <laughs> Canadian Girls in Training. And it's, so it's like a girls group and they would do crafts and they would have outings. The church ladies started catering for funeral receptions for Ward's Funeral Home. Ward's Funeral Home didn't have the facilities to do that and so they approached us and what we would do is we had about 15 people some men too and we would make up big trays of sandwiches and squares and things like the tea and coffee and after the funeral the people would walk over to the church and come in and sit down and relax and it was really wonderful to see them relax and talk to each other about the person who passed on and about the family stories and uh, I think it did them a lot of good and we did that for maybe 10 years or so and uh, then wards built their own facility so we didn't make sandwiches anymore. Well what's kept me at the church is the outreach. The church is outreach reach focused and I actually went with the group led by Dr. Jim Rogerson to Honduras uh, for two weeks at a time on three different occasions. Oh, my name is uh, Jim Rogerson. I'm a medical doctor, retired now, and I've been coming to this church for about 40, 40 50 years. Well, we, uh, one of the projects that, that I was involved in starting in 1984, 85, was after we had a speaker here with regard to what they call medical group missions. These are small mission teams of about 35 people with doctors and nurses and lay people and teenagers. Uh, now, currently, it's, a, it's called Medical Ministry International and it's all over the world. But in those days, it was mainly to Central America. And so our destination for the, all the trips that I was at was the north coast of Honduras, Central America. And we would put a team of doctors and nurses and students, as I was saying, into a small town designated by the Honduran government as being completely free of any health care. That there's no doctors, no nurses, no public health, no nothing. And we would set up a clinic there and see all comers, but mainly involved in a lot of health teaching. And uh, so I did that for about uh, 15 or 18 years. There's Daniel and there's me. And I think we're probably looking at something that we've been treating or, or something where the way we set up a, a clinic. And fundamentally, we were doing health teaching as uh, baby care, newborn care, uh, prenatal care. And, also, and then uh, we will also have a, a clinic for people who were ill and we would see all comers and treat what we could treat. And other uh, things I was involved with and am involved with is the, the drop-in, uh, which is located in our basement. And to see the people come in and receive food and assistance as far as public health, housing, and that sort of thing, clothing, um, being able to have a shower when you don't have one available or you're living on the street, a place to do your laundry, uh, get some clothes so you can go and get a job. That is very, very important to me. And I continue to help as much as I can. 
These are the drums belonging to members of our Ghanaian congregation that joined in with us. And they used to play them uh, at, um, they would call it a harvest, uh, when they were uh, gathering money for the church. So they would play them up at the front and the people would dance up the aisle and hand in their collection for the harvest. Members of our Ghanaian uh, group still attend our church, but they're fewer than they used to be because a lot of people retired and went home to Ghana. My name is David Watson. I was minister at Central United Church uh, for seven and a half years, uh, and I retired from Central United Church. We went to Ghana and made connections with people in Ghana. One of the connections that we made was through a hospital. And when we got back to Toronto, we had gone down to uh, one of the hospitals uh, with Joyce. Joyce smilingly said, you should see all the stuff that they throw out. I used to do Santa Claus for Joyce's uh, hospital patients. And they put me in a room with a whole bunch of mattresses and told me that's where I could change. So I changed there in a room full of old mattresses going to the dump. And with the, this were the beds. And I was very practical and said, it's not going to the dump. So we rescued all of that. This is pictures of our quilters who used to uh, work in the church here for many, many years. And they made beautiful quilts. And now they disbanded a few years ago, but we're so happy to have the pictures to remember them by. My name is Barbara Putnam and my uh, main name was Cruz and I came when I was eight years old to this church and I'm now almost 85, so it's a long time being here. It wasn't just religion, it was how to value life and how to treat people. And that has stuck with me my whole life because this church is outreach and that's why I love it so much. And this is the 200th anniversary the earliest we have an artist drew what he thought the Wesleyan Chapel looked like, but it isn't an actual photo. This is an actual photo at what the church looked like 1887 to 1938. And as you can see, it was a dirt road. There was a beautiful old library it's across the street. It didn't even exist then. So this is our first picture of this church. We have other pictures, but I'll take you to the final. This is what it looks like now in the corner. And first of all, from that church, it grew. And so they added going along Weston Road. And then it still grew. And we used to have to have two church services. The church was full. We'd have one at 9.30 and one at 11. And there were a lot of children involved. So it soon, every room was full in this church. They decided in 1955 to build a Christian education hall that could be used for other events. And so they built a, a lady in Weston, a Milner, gave us the chapel that you will see. And beside it was called the Christian Education Hall. You can't see it there, but there are other pictures. And that was full, and it had people all the time in it. Uh, we would have services at Christmas with the Korean congregation, and they would serve dinner after. We would have 750 turkey dinners for Thanksgiving, three different sittings, and that was people from the community. This morning, I'm sharing, it's more of a rhyming story, and it's called I Am enough. And you'll figure out during the service we use it in various ways. Jesus proclaims his love for Jerusalem and her people. And the reading starts.
Cheryl, I just wanted to add with all this, my gratitude for Shakespeare in Action and the artists like you. Because as you figured out, uh, we're at a turning point in the Western community and our church. And we have talked about now, we've gone back with you and done the history. And now we have to think about going ahead. And thanks to you people, you have made us walk back in history. And we have seen times when we have been faced with a crossroads and where are we going? And the former members of the church were able to deal with it and reach ahead. And you saw that when I showed you the church, we knocked down the CE hall, which had been necessary for CKSR building. And thanks to you, we'll be able to go whatever we have to do in the future, appreciating the history and using the example of the people gone before. We'll get through it, and it's thanks to you guys. <laughs>